This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Well, hell's not as bad as I thought it would be. Ooh, this is a nice looking beach! Blazing sauna harsh enough to burn the skin, salty sea air thick enough to choke on. For a bunch of greenhouse flowers isolated in a sheltered campus, occasional stimulation of this sort is probably a healthy thing. After unpacking our things from the cars, I set up a beach towel and umbrella to establish a base camp. A few feet away, Michiru sits motionless on the burning sand, limp as a rag doll. Poor Michiru. <laughs> is she okay? It's all too apparent that the ferocious horizontal g-forces and rapid shifts in momentum she experienced inside Amine's white devil jarred Michiru's internal organs. Her powerless, insipid smile suggests the possibility of brain damage. She resembles nothing so much as a soldier wasting away from den <laughs> dingle fever. I don't know how to say that. Her glazed eyes seem to be fixed on the gate to Nirvana. It's a truly pitiful spectacle. I bite my lower lip and avert my eyes. Michiru, can you hear my voice? I call out to her, but there's no response. Fortunately, in the next motion, an ex experienced orderly appear appears to assume caretaking duties. No, she's not. Yeah, you'll feel better if you're in your swimsuit, I think. <laughs> I'm a little worried about Michiru, though. As Michiru mules like a dispirited goat, Sachi wraps both her arms around her from behind and begins to drag her off across the beach like a sack of potatoes. A familiar scene, by this point. Sachi's clearly pretty used to the job herself. Yeah, I'll stay here and look after the stuff. Got it. As a man, getting down to my swim trunks is a simple matter of taking off my outer clothes on the spot, but I guess girls tend to want more privacy. Of course, it might be pushing it a little bit to refer to the eldest member of our group as a girl. And there's a certain female cyborg among us who would probably respond to the words let's get changed with an immediate certainly, then instantly begins stripping off her maid uniform. Not to mention the shrimp who would fling her hands into the air and cheerfully shout, take them off for me. Nope. And rounding out the set, a ludicrously top-heavy, totally shameless big sister type who'd turn putting on her swimsuit into a free show for every male on the beach. Now that I think about it, Sakaki actually seems like the most normal of the bunch. Weird. I've fought that for a while now, and I don't know how that happened. She went from literally trying to murder us to being, like, the only normal person here. Oh, hey! That's a nice swimsuit. That's a good one. I like that one. It, it rides a little low, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. It's a good color on her, though. Hmm, that didn't take too long. If it isn't Sakaki Yumiko... Mahama's exemplar of normality. No, that's honestly what I think. Basically, you're not much fun. A sober woman. Right down to the design of your swimsuit. But that's honestly what suits you best. You look good. That's not... That's a mean thing to say. I wouldn't say that that's plain. That's a fine one. Wasn't my intention to make fun of you. I said you were good, didn't I? <laughs> if you were in a school with only girls anime style, would you like it or hate it? I would hate it. Oh man, I would hate it. <laughs> I think I'm in the minority there. <laughs> then again, I also am just like, oh man, I'm so glad I'm not in school anymore. What's wrong with Sober? You're not wearing the swimsuit to get laughs, are you? That look fits you perfectly, Sakaki. Uh, hey, what? Hold on, where are you going all of a sudden? Nani? We're not on school grounds today, so everyone's acting as a group. Don't just wander off by yourself. <laughs> but why? <laughs> why would I dislike it? Oh man, how to count the reasons. Um, I'm... <laughs> 
Anime girls tend to be very shrill. They tend to be extremely characterized, and most of the archetypes I don't like. <laughs> also, I'm 24 and don't want to be in school anymore. Also, guess what? I don't like being the only guy in places. I like having my guy friends. Skalky, we came all the way out to the beach, right? You can read whenever you want. No, nothing set in stone yet, but... Hey, guess a change of location isn't enough to get that girl to play well with others. Why? How is it that I just knew that Amine was going to wear the skimpiest bathing suit she could possibly find? Like, seriously? It's not even a bathing suit! That, like, barely covers anything. Really? Really? Why would she be? Oh, I see. Incidentally, care to explain that thing? Looking to get laughs? Oof. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but just what kind of a swimsuit is that? No, does that thing even qualify as a swimsuit in the first place? It seems more like a few pieces of string. Yeah, that was made for somebody... A much different body type than you, Amine. Oh yeah, that's defective. It's definitely the swimsuit's fault, Amine. Yeah, that's for sure. It's definitely not something you wanted to happen. That's because you're wearing it so loosely. Why don't you tighten up the top? Okay, why didn't you buy a better swimsuit then? <laughs> hmm. Well, in your case, I guess anything but a sexy swimsuit would have felt like a letdown in terms of character consistency. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Well, yes, it's certainly an appropriate choice. To the point that it's hard to imagine anybody but you wearing it. That's really nothing to giggle about. Wait, Aminate, you've started snacking already? <laughs> You're so fat, oh my gosh. <laughs> what is with guys giving Aminate free stuff? Oh yeah, it's because she's blatantly flirting with them. Roasted corn is good! Or not roasted, grilled corn is good. Tell me, why do you always eat rod-shaped things like you're auditioning for a softcore porno? Do you really need to lick and slurp your way around it with that dirty gleam in your eye? Don't act like you're not aware of it. Alright, try eating some. We'll do a little test. Nobody makes those sounds when they eat anything. How many slightly plump lips crawl across the surface of the corn? Every once in a while, with a light pant of breath through her nose, she sinks her teeth in with an expression of ecstasy. I repeat, nobody makes these sounds when they eat. Hold it, Amine. Take a look around you. Amine's white teeth peek out from in between her pink lips as she separates her mouth from the corn with a wet pop. Looking around her, she finds every male nearby red from ear to ear, stealthily shooting glances in her direction. Because you're eating that thing in a very... weird way. Well, generally when people eat corn, they either go typewriter style, or they eat in circles around it. And you're just eating it like it's a sexy thing to do, which it's not. Thank you, Makina. Okay, yeah, see, that... So Makina has the same type of swimsuit, but it actually fits Makina very well. Like, that actually looks very nice on her. It was made for somebody of Makina's body type, and not somebody of Amine's. That looks nice. Nice black color, by the way. Look, you, I was tiptoeing around that for a reason. How about a little sympathy for all the poor guys who just jerked their eyes away awkwardly? Sexy, no. Cute, yes. That does fit you very well, Magna. Hmm, black, is it? Pretty bold color selection. Oh, 
Oh, so Amine probably had to pick out Machina's swimsuit, and she's like, oh, this would fit Am uh, this would fit Machina. Oh, I should get this, too. It's like, Amine, that's definitely not going to fit you. Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> no, I don't think it's the color that's making the difference. It's literally just that Machina's the type of person that it's made for. Well, it's not that big of a problem in Machina's case, but I really think you should have chosen something with a little more cloth, Amine. Yes. And even as you speak, your obobs begin to fall out of your top. As for Machina, your stomach is kind of poking out there, you know. What? Are they trying to insinuate that Machina is fat? Machina is like a literal twig. Hmm. Well, I guess that is more your style, Machina, so it's all good. And here she comes to save the day. Hmm? What's that ominous sound coming from? It sounds like something dragging itself across the sand. And that moan of bitter woe. What on earth? Hi, Michiru, you feeling better? <laughs> I know that car ride was a little bit rough for you. I still think but I still think that Michiru's swimsuit is my favorite. Honestly, like it's very simple and I know it's just supposed to be like the generic school swimsuit, but it, it works. It's very nice. Yeah, Amine, you need to drive better. Okay, uh, Mitru, if you're vomiting on the sand, you do need to sit down for a bit. <laughs> yeah, slap the back of her head, Machina. That's clearly what you need to do. <laughs> There's no need to start scowling at it. Also, Umi, that, uh, so Umi means sea. I know the word uh, Umi from um, Up on Poppy Hill. That's the main girl's name. Didn't know it meant C, though. Michiru takes one quavering step forward, then crumples on the spot. Without missing a beat, she begins to crawl her way toward the water, clawing the sandy beach for traction. What is it about the sea that drives her to such lengths? Probably because it's relief from the heat. Is she okay? Like, is, did she suffer irreparable damage from that car ride? Having come to the beach, I think she feels obligated to enjoy it to the fullest, even if it literally kills her. I, I, I kind of admire that. Before long, Michiru's strength fails her, and her valiant struggle comes to a halt. Lying flat on her side, she begins to gnash her teeth and bewail her weakness. Yeesh. Oh, hey! Okay, that's a nice swimsuit for Sachi. That's a very cute one. I like the pink color. That fits her very well. <laughs> that's a weird metaphor. No! <laughs> it's okay, Sachi. You can enjoy yourself. I think she needs some sustenance. Didn't you have snacks in your car, Amine, or did I just completely make that up? I think I just made that up. Oh, hey, Principal! Okay, Principal also has a nice swimsuit. I mean, she's also wearing the jacket over it. How's it going, girl? Come on, Chizuru, you're still young yourself. 
またそんな見えすぎたお政治を言って。What? You don't want my flattery? If so, it's less work for me, so no skin off my nose. どうしてそういう意地悪を言うんです Sorry, that wasn't my real intention. Truth is, I've always been the childish sort of, sort of guy who teases girls to try to get their attention. Haven't grown out of it yet. <laughs> wow. Guilty as charged. Uh oh. You aren't going to swim, Chizuru. Hmm. But I'm the one who you uh who, I'm the one who invited you to the beach. Doesn't really seem right to just leave you alone. Not trying to be pushy here, but my master always told me to give women two chances to say yes. Why don't we swim together, Chizuru? Uh, who's the lifeguard then? <laughs> Want me to teach you? Oh, if we go to the beach again, okay. Alright, in that case, I'll see you later. She's officially our chaperone, and I guess it's understandable that she can't romp around with her students. But we came all this way out to this nice beach, right? I don't think anyone would complain if she floated around a bit. But when I look back, the principal's sitting under the beach parasol with one arm wrapped around her knees, fluttering a hand to urge me away. With a small shrug, I turn my back on her and head for the sea. Not a problem. I'll give her a nice pat on the ass later. Don't pet her donkey without her permission. More importantly, did you need me for something? Well enough. Kind of hard to say exactly. Let's see, I'm good enough to earn a, car, a sea car dri uh, diving qualification, I guess. When I was in America, I picked up a good number of diving credentials. Even after returning to Japan, I did a fair bit of rowboat training with a group of combat engineers. And you're like 17? This is very unrealistic. I'm nowhere near to the level of the specialized divers from the special ops branch, but for more typical purposes, there shouldn't be any problem with my ability to handle myself in the water. It's been a while since I last swam in the ocean, but I don't anticipate any difficulties. Yeah, okay, I need to teach Principal and Makina how to swim. I don't mind, but my lessons tend to get pretty severe, you know. How about you teach her instead, Amine? What, you can't swim either? And whose fault is that? For future reference, a swimsuit should generally be something you're actually capable of swimming in. <laughs> um, no they won't. Yes, because the cloth barely has anything to catch on. The same problem, my ass. You know no shame, shrimp. Can you explain to me how I'm supposed to teach the girl anything when her swimsuit's going to fall off after a few strokes? Oh, is that just a terrible swimsuit? That could be. Hmm, such carelessness has made, le led many to a watery grave. <laughs> They're doing the identical glare at me! <laughs> Neither of them look amused. Easier said than done. No! And why would I do that? No! Hey, you're a pushy woman. Okay! I choose Sachi! Sachi, save me! I'm not going to decide anything. Okay, say what you want. Poor Michiru. 
Yeah, so let's hang out with Michiru and Sachi. That'll be much more enjoyable. Yeah, uh, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Michiru, I think you need to eat something. <sighs> I don't want that. No, Michiru, no! Don't believe the insults. <laughs> yes, life size prog castle. <laughs> Not even a scale model, life size. It'll probably take us like an hour and a half to make. <laughs> okay, the image of Machina in the little tubey is very cute. <laughs> Fits her perfectly here, too. Yeah, I guess you're right. Let's begin the Swain lesson. That's the su What's that supposed to mean? It's what we're here for. Okay, Machina, tell me. Can you put your face underwater? <laughs> what? You don't know it? You learned that float in elementary school swimming class. <laughs> hmm, alright then. Can you pull off a jellyfish float? Where the turtle float involves putting your knees to your chest, the jellyfish float has you dangle your limbs loosely down like the rotting, <laughs> like the corpse of an Indian soldier carried along the Yagachi River. Wow, these metaphors. <laughs> Sorry, analogies or similes. Alright, Machina, try to feel the bitter regrets and stubborn pride of a freedom fighter, gunned down by the col colonialists before your dream of an independent nation could be realized. Ninja, indeed. Yes, good! <laughs> okay, next up we'll do a dead man's float. Tuck your chin toward your chest, extend your limbs straight out, and keep yourself horizontal. Subco uh, consciously keep yourself slim and streamlined like you've become a submarine. Oh, looking pretty good! However, your butt's floating up a bit. Main tank, short blow. Take her down 16. Up, oh, Periscope! They are so weird. Hmm? Yes, what about it? Look at that, she's maintaining a beautiful horizontal. If you can float this well, it's just as good as swimming. You seem dubious, Amine. But can you do the same? I kind of get the feeling you wouldn't be able to keep up this level of a float, what with those oversized ballast tanks. <sighs> Why are we talking about Obob so much? Oh, 
Why is everybody trying to convince me that Amine's fat? She's not. <laughs> Meanwhile... That's where I would be, with the normal people. Aww. Literally, that's where I would be on the beach. それとところで何らかの理由をつけたことはあると思います。そっか、コミュニティなのに。そうおっしゃられる学園長はなぜ海に入らないのですか私、泳げないのに。さすがにこの都市でイリスさんと一緒にバタ足の練習をするわけには
A typical bowl of rice is maybe 150, so there should be more than enough. You're getting a lot nicer, you know, Yumiko. Hmm? What is it? Still need me for something? You're not in my way, but this isn't exactly interesting to watch, you know. You're a strange one. <laughs> yep, I steal anything. Well, uh, pretty much anyone can handle cooking rice in a simple aluminum mess kit. Yeah, you're basically good at everything. You're getting dangerously close to a Mary Sue, except you're actually kind of a jerk, so... Well, as much as the next guy, I guess. It's probably because I've spent so much time in harsh circumstances where the ability to cook rice and swim competently are simply prerequisites for survival. But neither of these strikes me as anything worth boasting about. Now that I think about it, it's been a while since the last time I swam in the sea for fun. No, it's more that... I spent time in the sea for work, but it's been longer that I, since I took a swim for pleasure. Let's see... I guess the last time was a summer camp back when I was in middle school. Yeah. But either way, it's probably a little bit different from the sort of camp you're imagining, Sakaki. That's a little hard to explain, but... Alright, so at the end of my six-month first term at that school, there was an exam to determine whether we'd be promoted from reserve student candidate to reserve student. One day, our instructor gets the group together and says, In one week, you'll be taking a cruise to a southern island for a week of relaxing fun in the sun. A cruise might sound nice, but we were getting crammed into a ship carrying a bunch of reserve candidates from another branch. That boat was taking them out for naval training and dropping us off pretty much as an afterthought. So anyway, on the way to our destination, we stopped by a port to resupply on fuel. It happened to be a navy base, so a bunch of students like us weren't allowed off the ship. They kept us waiting for hours at the mouth of the harbor. We arrived at the port in the morning, but we were still sitting there late in the afternoon. It was just about this time of day, actually. So the sun starts to go down, and we're still standing in the mouth of the harbor with our anchor dropped. No idea how long they plan to keep us waiting. Might be here all night, you know? So we started preparing dinner. But of course, we're talking about making food for a hundred people all at once. When the ship's sailing, the ventilation's fine, but when you're sitting there anchored, that's not the case. The warm air from the cooking uh, made the interior of the ship unbearably hot in no time at all. Our entire cruise group, along with all the naval guys who weren't on duty, came out on deck in a desperate attempt to get a little cool. But this was a southern island right near the equator, so it was hardly an improvement. At that point, our squad leader pressed the instructors for permission to swim and managed to get the okay. So everyone jumped from the sea into the sea from the deck and played around for a while. That was a very long-winded story. Yeah, I guess so. Didn't really have the time to play around at that camp. They dropped us off at some uninhabited, anonymous island surrounded by rocks. There wasn't a decent bit of level ground on the entire barren island, let alone a sandy beach. They loaded us on a launch with our personal equipment and some chickens, and then dropped us off there for our fun in the sun. Live ones, as rations. The place didn't have much in the way of water, let alone food, so they released 20 birds. Told us to do what we wanted with them. Capture them and make them lay eggs, snap their necks and eat them raw, whatever. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> you think? People did give up and fail the test, but it was pretty rare for anyone to die, so our instructors always said it was practically a vacation. What kind of sadistic school was this? It was probably the military. Yeah, you don't seem like you'd be particularly good at that sort of thing. Now that I think about it, maybe I should apologize for making you tag along on our little outdoor expedition today. You ended up not going in the water, though. Looks like you were reading the whole time. Kind of wasted your time, didn't we?
Fair enough. True enough. But... Really? That surprises me. I see. So it's my fault after all. Sorry, Sakaki. Alright, we're going to barbecue now. Yeah, it'll be cooked soon. Oh man, we're doing authentic barbecue. Fine, I'll be over in a minute. So, uh, what were we talking about again? Was she about to confess to us? If you say so. What are you talking about? Oh. What? Where is this coming from? I've come to believe that the desire to talk in cryptic circles may be a defining characteristic of the female gender. It seems Sakaki is no exception to the general rule. By the time we finished off our barbecue dinner, we didn't get a CG of the barbecue! I'm disappointed. Zero out of ten. The day is beginning to grow dark in earnest. All of a sudden, Amine snaps her fingers, trots off to her mini-truck, and opens the passenger door. Oh man! Fireworks! Heck yeah! Thank goodness Gandalf was there to give us some. Fireworks? Whoa! CG! Alright! We've got Yumiko just like, huh? What is going on? We've got Michiru like, ah yeah! This is awesome! We've got Amine in her skimpy outfit like, hey, is it okay? Makina's like, oh boy, I'm not sure. I'm worried about this big bird. <laughs> Uh, Sachi's over here, I think, lighting one over there, and then we've got the principal just like, Um, I don't think you should be lighting these on the beach. <laughs> what a fantastic CG, and I'm not sure if I'll actually be able to use that as a thumbnail because... Well, skimpy bathing suit, but we'll have to wait and see. Oh yeah, you, get, you better get the rockets. They aren't real fireworks if you don't have the rockets. <laughs> don't worry though, Michiru. We got the monkey cars. These are going to be super cool. <laughs> Proceeds to do nothing. <laughs> These just are sparklers. I've conveniently blocked that memory out. I'll settle for a dragon. Not as cool as the monkey cars, but... I kind of agree with that. Fireworks are wont to explode. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of explosions. I'd rather stick to safe fireworks. Psychological trauma might be overstating means, but when there's a sudden barrage of harsh cracks and pops nearby, I can hear the screams of ghosts burned into my ears a long time ago. Yeah, he was in the military, wasn't he? And when someone sets off a flashy skyrocket in the dark night sky, it's hard to resist the instinctive urge to throw myself flat to the ground and crawl for cover. Unlike the distinct sugary sweet smell of Semtex and HMX, the odor of fireworks is reminiscent of gunpowder, so every time I catch a whiff, memories of the muddy jungle flood back into my head, and I recall the taste of blood like scorched iron on my tongue. Can't help but slightly furrow my brow. Hmm? Come to think of it, you're strangely quiet, Machina. I'd think this sort of thing would be right up your alley. Don't worry, the ones you hold in your hand are perfectly safe. Want to give it a try? The skyrockets Sachi ended up preparing faintly color the night sky one after another, burning light after images of our, into our retinas. This time, the sharp aroma of hydrogen sulfide that reaches my nose doesn't seem as bad at all that. Probably because of the smiles and laughter of my classmates as they watch the sky at my side. I wish this could last forever. Aww. 
Will that childish hope vanish as quickly as the blaze of a firework in the night? Even then, I don't think I'll forget this moment. I don't think I'll ever forget that there was a time in my life when everything was peaceful and warm. And as long as I have that memory, I think I'll be able to go on living. Aw, that was nice. Aw, beach day is over. That's okay, Michiru. You can ride on the trunk of the principal's car. Or on the roof. No, no, no. You're, you don't get to play the victim here, Amine. Want me to ride with you? <laughs> no! <gasps> All of these girls are just like, you are not going alone with Yuji. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes she did. <laughs> I was driven to this place by a vague impatience, the desire for something. But even now, I haven't pinned down exactly what I'm looking for. Not knowing what I want, it's impossible to find a clear path forward. But in that brief moment on the beach, as, <laughs> as transitory as the goal of the sparklers in our hands, I forgot all about that. I forgot to be anxious, frustrated. I forgot that I'm stumbling in fog. And on the return trip, the cool wind quietly blowing through my lowered car window feels strangely refreshing. The soothing touch of the air on my sunburned face feels almost like a caress. For some reason that I can't express in words, it makes me feel like it's too early to give up hope. Aw, that was nice. I like beach day. Well, unfortunately, that's where we're going to have to end the stream for today. We went on longer than I usually do. We almost went three hours today. But, I, hey, I had to do the beach scene. I wasn't going to quit in the middle of the beach. No way that that's happening. So, anyhow. We will save. Bada beam, bada boom. Papa was a rolling stone. That's a weird skit title. Okay. So that was it for Fruit of Grisea today. I'm, I, you know, I'm glad that I was able to record to stream a little longer because I went two weeks without streaming. So I gave you guys a little extra treat. VODs will be up on YouTube hopefully this coming week, and I'll be streaming this again next Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So thanks everyone for joining in today. Hope you had some fun. I definitely had some fun, and hopefully we'll be continuing Grisea next week. I wonder how close we are to the end of the, uh, like introductory part before the roots branch off because that almost seemed like it was a good transition from like the skits to the main story maybe that's what it is and maybe that was what it was there for but we'll just have to wait and see next time so thanks everyone for tuning in hope you have a great rest of your weekend and god bless